what I've got here though, I got cut off at the end of last lesson, okay? But what I've got here is we call it leaving it as exact, or sometimes you can hear it called surd form because you've got that square root there. We're just leaving it like that. We're just leaving it like that. But sometimes, sometimes they'll ask you to leave as two decimal places, okay? We're not going to do anything different. We're still going to use the quadratic formula here, but we just have to change this last step. We just have to change this last step here, right? Let me show you what I mean. Let's look at this example. I'm going to go through the exact same process. They say solve this using the quadratic formula. Again, there should be equals zero here. Always forget that. I'm going to go through the exact same process. I'm going to find my A, Bs, and Cs. Always be careful about those um, ones and stuff like that. Um, can you tell me, Freya, if there's nothing in front of that x squared, what, what's my A value then? It's just one, right? My B, well, that's just negative one. And C is negative nine, exactly right. And then I'm going to solve for x again. Substitute into my quadratic formula. I've got minus, minus one, plus or minus root uh, B squared, negative one, all squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 9, so a lot of negatives here, I just want to be careful, and then 2 times a, or just 2 times 1. Now, when you're leaving it as exact, what you usually have to do is, you usually have to simplify this out. One advantage, one advantage about doing it this way, when I'm asked to find it as two decimal places, is I can actually just put this straight into my calculator. But you need to be really careful when you're doing that because like I said, with all these negatives and all these brackets around, it can be very easy to make a mistake. Let me show you how I'd put this into my calculator. First of all, just to remember, right, where are my two solutions? Well, my two solutions are, because I've got this plus or minus here, my two solutions are either going to be this guy with just the plus or this guy with just the minus. Does that make sense? Those are my two solutions there, right? Like, like over here, right? The plus or minus, those are just my two solutions. So the first one that I want to check is, I'm going to try, let's just do it with the plus, right? I'll have, I'm going to have a fraction there first of all, so I'll put that in. Okay. You might want to do this along with me. Uh -huh. I've got negative, negative one, plus the square root of whatever's in there. And I want to write that in as exactly as I've got there, so I don't make any mistakes. So minus one, all squared, minus four, times 1 times minus 9. It's going to go over the screen because it's a bit messy. Over 2 times 1. That's, that's just 2, but I'm just writing in, in just to check. When I put this in, I, I get an answer. If you got a math error, it may mean that you put something in incorrectly. So double check it's exactly as you've written with all the brackets and all the negatives there. Okay? So that's one of my answers. They say to leave it as two decimal places. So I'll just say... 3.54. Or, what was my other possibility again? What was the other solution I could get? With a negative, right? Now, instead of, instead of writing that whole thing out again, what I would suggest is you really use this replay button here, right? Yeah, so if you, if you just press AC, it will all go away. If you want to go back to it, you can just press this up button here, and boom, just like magic, your solution comes back, okay? Can everyone get that? So if you press the top button here, if you just press the top button here, once you've entered that in, did it work? It didn't work? Okay, if you press on, then it resets your memory in a sense. Yeah, yeah, so, so if you just press AC, if you just press AC, then that, then that won't clear. If you can go back to AC, and go back to the one that you previously did. You don't have to type the whole thing in. The only thing you have to change is the minus to reflect that other solution. And you get that number in there. So you get a negative solution. That's fine. We can still get that. We know those still work. Negative 2.54. Here's the thing. It's really important that we actually always check our solutions just to make sure I didn't put anything in wrong. Okay, one way to know that you did it wrong is if you get a math error, then something's gone wrong there. The other way to check is, remember, what is a quadratic equation? A quadratic equation is telling me, I'm trying to solve this, I'm just trying to say, what values of x will I get to substitute in here so that the other side becomes zero? And I can check that really easily. And the best way to check is using the answer key. If I say, okay, negative 2.54, whatever all that is, is one of my solutions, to check it, I'll just put it back into the original equation. The original equation was 
And because I don't want to type that really long decimal all out, I'll just use answer. So answer all squared minus the answer again, minus 9. What do I expect when I enter? I should get 0, fingers crossed. And I do get 0. If I check the other one, I can do the same thing. Go back. Um, I just kept going up because remember, I didn't press on to clean my memory. And I check it in again, and I get 0. One thing, to ch one thing that you might want to do and be tempted to do is, if I just put in 3.54, let me just check 3.54 quickly. Let's just check if 3.54 works, if I put that in. Huh, I get really close to zero, but it's not quite zero. Why is that? Because you rounded it off. Yeah, Maddie? Yeah, because I rounded it off. Like, rounding it makes it easier to write the answers. I don't have to write so many decimal places. But if you just put that straight in, it won't work exactly, because technically the solution is actually this. We've just rounded it off. That's why sometimes the exact solution is better because it's much more accurate. Okay? But just to note, sometimes questions will ask that. But let's look at this last one here. Right? Because with the quadratic formula, it seems kind of black box. Like we've just got this really big expression here. Where does it even come from? Why does it even work? And um, we will look at that at some point in time later. But here's the thing you want to think about. When you're using the quadratic formula, when you're using the quadratic formula, you always need it in this form here. Your a, b, and c values need to be ax squared plus bx plus c. Your equation needs to be in this format. a, b, and c, they can be any kind of number. It could be positive or negative or even like fractions maybe. But you need your equation in this format. And the first thing you notice is this one here isn't quite like that. What's, what's one thing you could do to try and make it look more like that? I could expand it out. Yeah, let's try that. So usually you want an x squared in there. Right now I don't have any squares. But if I expand this out, using these brackets here, I can just do that. So it would be 4x squared plus 8x equals 2, 5. It's still not quite right. What's missing? Yeah, I need, I need a 0 on the other side of the equation. So I can just subtract both sides by 5. So 4x squared plus 8x minus 5 should be equal to 0. Right? So when you're looking at things like this, right? sometimes they try and trick you by maybe rearranging things like that. Don't be tricked by that, right? I always need my quadratic equation in this format to apply it, right? And then I can go through the same process again. Uh, Corey, can you tell me, what are my A, B, and C values in this one over here? Um, yep. Uh, be careful. B is what, sorry? Uh, okay, it's 8 there. And C is, well, there's a negative 5 there. That's the number by itself. And then you just have to substitute it in, right? So I've gone, I'm going to have x is equal to minus 8 plus or minus root 8 squared minus 4 times. Now be careful, a here again is 4. So don't, don't lose track of what variables you've got. You've got 4ac. That's actually 4 times 4 again times negative 5 all over 2 times 4. Oh, well, this, this one's actually quite nice, actually. <laughs> so it's 0 0.5. 0 to two decimal places, or minus 2.50, because I needed to two decimal places, OK? Again, it's always very easy to check. How do I check? I go and take these values. Which, where do I substitute it back into? Yeah, the original equation that you got here substitute it back into there and check if that's equal to zero, then you know you're right. Okay? It's an always an easy way to check. Go back and say, okay, do these actually work? If not, I might have typed something in wrong here, or maybe I forgot a negative, or maybe I mixed up my A, B, and C values. That's really easy to do as well. So just be careful when you're doing that. Really important to always check your answers.